To wrap up our chapter, there are a few more things we need to discuss. We need to know how to follow standard precautions to protect ourselves and our clients. So our learning objective for today is to define standard precautions. Standard precautions are guidelines published by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention that require the employer and the employee to assume that all human blood and body fluids are potentially infectious. If you think someone is HIV positive, you are likely to be more cautious when providing their services. In order to prevent the spread of infection and disease, some services must be performed while wearing personal protective equipment. This equipment may include wearing items such as gloves and safety goggles or using items such as tongs or a drain basket to avoid continuous skin contact with certain chemicals. Knowing what to do if you should injure yourself or a client during a service is vital to your success as a cosmetologist. Accidents happen. But it is how we deal with the accident that sets us apart from the rest. Nicks and cuts are the most common form of injury in a salon. These types of injuries are referred to as exposure incidents. There are self exposure incidents where you cut yourself. Then there are client exposure incidents where you cut the client or where you broke open a wound the client had prior to their visit. It is important that you know how to handle an exposure incident. In class, you will practice these steps to help ensure understanding. Once you or your client have been cut, stop the service immediately. Inform the client as to what happened exactly. Do not try to hide an exposure incident from the client. Let them know you will take care of the cut promptly and professionally. If assistance is needed, have your assistant put on gloves. Next, wash the injury with soap and water. Then, apply pressure to stop any bleeding. Once the bleeding has been subsided, cleanse the area with an antiseptic, such as Neosporin. Apply this product with a Q-tip, so as not to come into contact with any blood or body fluid. Afterwards, apply an adhesive bandage. Lastly, put on gloves to further protect you from any blood or body fluid exposure. If there is an exposure incident, there are protocols that you should follow to ensure that no one else can come into contact with and become infected by someone's blood. One of such protocols is referred to as double bagging. Double bagging means that we should gather up all single-use items that may have come into contact with blood or body fluid and discard them into a sealable plastic bag. We need to ensure that once all items are placed in the bag, we seal it. After that bag has been sealed, we place it into a second bag and seal the outer bag as well. Then, we would properly dispose of our double bag trash accordingly.